Hey there, Seguro Golfers. Today, I'm talking about the biggest lie in the history of the golf swing. And what I'm talking about is the release. This magical thing you do at impact and after impact right here. A lot of golfers are taught to roll their hands hard after the release. And I'm here to tell you, you don't have to do any of that. In fact, it's a waste of time and it's just causing you to be really inconsistent. If you want super consistency in your golf game, stay tuned to this episode. I'm going to help you get that. All right, so what is the release? The release is this point after impact where a lot of golfers are told to roll their hands hard. But in reality, it's just the point where the club and the hands are here after impact. The pros release the club like this. Amateurs are taught to release the club like this. There's a big difference between the two. In the amateur way, the club face is rotating a whole lot. The club face determines the start direction of your golf ball. So if you want the golf ball to start in the same direction every single time, you need to know where that club face is at impact for that one millisecond in time. And if you're consciously going about rolling the hands hard after impact like this, that club face is shutting down really fast. This is what happens when I turn my hands. Look at that club face. Square, shut, 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 shut. Shut, 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 shut. And some of you even do it twice in your swing. You open the club on the way back, you close the club on the way through. So it looks something like this. Look at all that hand action. So how can you expect to know that that club face is gonna be square at impact when you're doing this? Open, closing, open, closing. It's really unpredictable. To be a professional golfer, you need to go on the road play great golf weeks at a time, and for you to be consistent, it's darn near impossible to think about doing this and getting this right every single time. Some guys can do it, but you need 10,000 balls a day to do that, and we don't really have that time. You wanna do this and you wanna make golf fun. You don't wanna work so hard. So we're gonna do it the real pro way, the way that the best golfers of all time have done it, and that is to not think about where this club face is at all. When you go through impact, you want the club face to go square and keep it square through impact because then you at least know, oh, club face is square at impact, that ball is going to start on the intended line and then keep it square through impact. Reason for keeping it square through impact is simple. You want to compress the golf ball. So hit dirt and continue compressing through here. This is where the most speed is going to be right after impact. So the best players, when they release the club, they're not really releasing it at all. You'll see the back of the trail hand, so it gives the appearance that they've turned their hands over, but they really haven't. They're just continuing through impact. The arms are staying straight. The club face is really, really, really square. Look at that beautiful club face. It's square. It's parallel to my spine here. That's square club face. See here? Parallel to my spine, parallel to my spine. It's square. It's not shutting down a whole lot. There are some exceptions. Bubba Watson's one of those exceptions. He relies on his hands a lot, but he's an exception to the rule. Majority of the players, the best players, keep the club face really square. How does Bryson DeChambeau keep the club square? He has to release the club like this. Swinging the club at 800 miles an hour, doing this is really inconsistent. So how do we get out of this old habit, this huge lie that you've been taught? And I know some of you get this from the Ben Hogan playbook because he gives the appearance of really releasing the hands hard. I want to tell you just quickly here, he talks about hitting hard with his trail hands, like three, five, ten trail hands, really hard. Well, the more you hit hard with the trail, arm, or hand, the more the club face will close down on you. Hogan also had a super weird grip that kept the club face really, really open. So it was like coming in open here, so he hit so hard with the trail hand it would square it up. So it gives the appearance that it would release, but it's actually just firing, firing. So in the process of firing that trail arm through, the club face starts closing down. Just a side note, figure you should know that. We want to be consistent. We want to hit the ball really clean. We want to have a lot of fun. Simple, right? Keep it simple. Don't let your brain do all the work here. So we need to eliminate excessive hand action. When you hit golf shots, we're going to start at a micro level. You need to know where this club face is. Coming through impact, if your club face is pointing vertical, the toe is vertical, you have rolled your hands. That's no bueno, we don't like that. If you come through impact, club face is pointing more at the sky, like parallel to your spine, 
Yes. How do we feel this? Eliminate the hand action. In your golf swing, I want you to set up with your arms straight, and we're not going to do anything with the club face. The torso is going to guide the stroke. So I'm going to tilt, keep my head in place, and I'm going to tilt and keep my head in place. That's going to keep the club face really square, doing nothing with the hands. And it's so simple, it's so simple, it should be illegal. In fact, every golf school in the country, except the Stack and Tilt Golf School, is going to have a fit with you knowing this. So if you can do this, you're going to hit it really pure. Keep your relationship to the ball. Hello, ball. Good to see you today. Set up with the arms straight. Keep the club face really quiet. Put it in the library. Shh. All you've got to do is on the way through, make sure the club face points at the sky. Beautiful. Nice pitch shot. There's my club face after impact. Really, really square. I didn't have to think about timing up with my hands, and this stuff drives me crazy. I see so many players on Lesson T. They come up to me like, well, what do I do about this release? How do I time up this? And I'm like, it's okay. We're just gonna skip that all together and make it like a lot easier. And they're so happy. They're so happy because they don't have to go back and think about all this stuff. It's no wonder there's so much struggling out there. If you keep the club face square, keep the hands quiet, what can go wrong? You have a much more controlled golf swing and you're going to have plenty of power because you're hitting it on the center of the face. And that's a beautiful thing. So once we've hit some shots, keeping the arms straight, tilting, tilting, you see club face parallel to your spine, woo, or matching your spine. And we can hit some full shots doing the same thing. I really recommend when you swing through, you stop about here when you're starting out. So you can know that you release the club the right way. Club face at the sky. So these full swings are gonna look more like sh sawn off shotguns on the way through. Just keep the arms straight, keep it quiet in the beginning. So it's holding it off just so I can see. Did I do a good job there? Yeah, it looks pretty good. You'll know you did it wrong when you turn your hands over really hard. And for a lot of you, it's gonna feel like, if you've been a big releaser, it's gonna feel like you're doing nothing, really nothing, like this, this is numb here, because you're used to doing this. So if you see on the way through this, I'm coming after you, I'm not too happy about that. You're gonna be miserable. How do you know? How do I know? Because I used to do it that way for years. Set up to the golf ball, keep the club face quiet. Shh, don't do anything, club face, please. And then tilt. And hold it off. There we go. I should stop a little shorter because I'm going too far here, but I really like the idea of hitting these flying wedges. Yeah, right there. Whew, that's spicy. I guarantee you, if you can keep that club face quiet, you're gonna compress the ball so well, you have a lot more fun, you're not thinking about the releasing of the hands. This lie, this has been going on for 40, 50 years. It's an illusion. And if you just believe the illusion, if you wanna play the game of timing, which I know some of you do, you have the option. Timing, timing, no timing, square. No timing square. Look at the way through, boom. Watch all the pros, you're gonna see this. You don't see a whole lot of this. It's, in it's like impossible. This, on the way through, look at that. You're seeing this. Look at the slow-mos of the pros on TV. They do a lot of post-action impact shots. Boom, right there's the money. Show me the money, it's right there. It's on a limb, it's like, I got you a free $100 bill right there. Oh. So good dog offers. If you enjoyed this video, like it. Subscribe if you want more awesome content like this. Comment below if this helped you become a better golfer. And if you want to play the best golf of your life, check out my online golf school, segudo.golf, 10 bucks a month to play the best golf of your life. Subscribe here, golf school here. Two awesome selections for you from the Sugudo Golf archives. And I look forward to seeing you in a future episode. Have a rockin' week.